Yo, what's good? Welcome back to another video. Today, I'm gonna show you guys how to add a flare panel to your pants. I know I made a video about this already, but apparently a lot of people were confused on how I explained it. So in this video, I'll try to explain it differently or better. Um, and then by the end of it, we'll all be able to add on flare panels to any pants. Let's get into it. Now, in order to make the flare panel clean and seamless almost, is to make sure that you have seam allowance. Now, what is seam allowance? It's that area in between the edge of the fabric and the seam stitch. I got some jeans here. When you flip it inside out, this part right here with the yellow or orange stitching is the seam allowance. And we're gonna use this to make sure that the flare panel looks seamless when we sew it on to these pants. So the first step, of course, is to get the measurements of the flare panel. How wide do you want it and how tall you want it to go up your leg. Now let's start off with the height. I personally like to make mine minimum 16 inches, but that's just my personal preference. Also, I'm six foot one. I'd like to say it depends on your height, but it really is just up to your personal preference. Now, when it comes to the height, you have to know if you want the pants to have an open hem or a closed hem by the end of it. If it's an open hem, the 16 inches is fine. You can leave it as that. But if you're gonna fold the hem, you have to add on that measurement how much you're gonna fold that hem. So like when I make my hems, I usually fold it at around half an inch, which means that I have to add on that half an inch to that 16 inches uh, for my length. So in total, it'll be 16 and a half inches. Now that we know what the height will be, we gotta figure out what the width will be next. The first step is to lay flat the pants that you wanna add the flare panel to, and you wanna measure how wide the opening of the pant leg is already. The pants that I'm using in this video, it measures to six inches. When I flare my pants, I normally like the opening to be 10 inches total, Again, it's just personal preference. You can make it whatever you want. Because I want it to be 10 inches, these are six already. 10 minus six is four inches. So the flare panel that will be seen will be four inches. Now, when it comes to the width, you remember seam allowance. If you're adding that in, you have to make sure to add that to the total length or the total measurement of the width. So in my case, it'll be four inches plus one inch for the seam allowance. So in total, five inches. Now, if you have an open hem, you're done there, you have the width already. But in this video, since I wanna hem the pants and I increased the length by half an inch for the hem, I'm actually going to add another half an inch to the width to compensate for when I fold it up, it's gonna lose that half an inch that I just added. Then after I sew in that hem, it'll retain the measurement of the width that I wanted the flare panel to be. So recap for the width, it'd be four inches plus one inch for the seam allowance plus half an inch to compensate for the hem. So the total length of the width that we're gonna cut out will be five and a half inches. All right, now that we have the measurements for the flare panel, we wanna take the fabric that you wanna make the flare panel out of, and we're gonna measure and draw out the square or the rectangle that's going to be the flare panel. Now it doesn't really matter which side you wanna draw the markings on. It can be the front side that will be shown or it could be the back side. I like to draw it on the front side. It just makes my life a lot easier, but there is a risk that the markings that you'll make with a Sharpie, by the way, will be seen after it's sewn in if you don't sew it correctly, but it's totally up to you. But for me, I'm drawing it on the side that will be shown. Now, because I cut out this section right here, um, I don't really think it's that straight. So instead of starting at the very corner here, I'm going to move in a little bit, start like right here at this black dot. Now it's really helpful to have this ruler right here, this transparent one with all these other extra guidelines that you can see. It helps a lot with making straight lines from just like single points like this. So like when I measure here, five and a half inches would be here to here. And then what I can do also is move it down a bit so that I'll line up the dots with these guidelines. And since the ruler is transparent and thanks to the guidelines, if I line up the ruler to each of the dots that I made, I know that this point right here and this point right here will be in line with the original dots that we made so that we can use our ruler once again to make a straight line. Now this line is gonna go past 16 inches or the height that I want. The height of it doesn't really matter as long as it's above the measurement that we decide the length will be. So in my case will be 16 and a half. So as long as the line goes above 16 and a half, which is right here, you can't even see it on the frame, the line's good. The next thing you wanna do is we have to figure out where the tip of the flare will be. Again, mine's gonna be 16 and a half inches. So the midpoint of five and a half would be 2.75. It'd be about right here. Now the next thing is we gotta figure out where the 16 and a half is. And it's gonna be right here. And then using our ruler, we can figure out where the midpoint will be. Now that we have the dot where the tip of the flare will be, now we're gonna draw the triangle, basically the flare guideline. So we're gonna start off at the bottom, but again, we have to make sure that we incorporate the seam allowance. So we have to measure half an inch on both sides. It'll be right here and right here. 
All right, now that we have those two points, we can take our ruler, line it up at one dot, line up the other side at the new dot marking we made at the bottom, and we're gonna draw one side of the flare, and then do the same on the other side. This triangle is gonna be the flare. So at this point, we can take our scissors or whatever, and then just cut it out along these lines here, as long as you remember to keep this space there because this is the seam allowance, you know. And we're gonna cut above the point of the flare. Think of it as like seam allowance there as well, even though it's not seam allowance, but just nice to have extra rather than less because it's better to have more than less because if you have more, you can always just cut it. If you have too little and you can't cut, you can't cut. All right, so let's cut this out. So we're left with this. Now to explain the guidelines, these lines here is where you're gonna be sewing. This is gonna be the seam connecting this flare panel to the pants you're gonna be using. The reason why I like making the guidelines on the side that's showing is because we're gonna be folding along this guideline to create the seam allowance for the flare. So while you're folding it along the line, you just take your iron, you're gonna iron it down to make the crease for the seam. All right, so this is how it looks like. This is how it's gonna look like when it's on the pants, if I sew it correctly. But see, you can't even see the guideline, the marking that I made. Let me do the same for this side. But here's the flare. Obviously, all this bulk right here, we're gonna trim it off later. But for now, we have the creases, we have the seam allowance. It's basically ready to be sewn in. So the next step is we're gonna take the pants that we're gonna add this onto and we're gonna open up the out seam of them. Okay, so we're gonna take the pants that we wanna add the flare panel to and we're gonna turn it inside out and we're gonna work on the inseam right here. Then we're gonna open up the hem at the bottom with some seam rippers. Again, you can use whatever you want, exacto knife, scissors. All right, now that we have the hem ironed out, the hem fully extended, we can mark with white chalk pencil how tall we want to open up the pant leg. Of course, I want to open mine up to 16 and a half to account for uh, closing up the hem. So 16 and a half is right here. Then we're going to rip open this seam up to this marking that we made here. So now that the out seam is separated, the next step is to pin the flare panel to the seams of the pants you're going to be using. So you want to make sure that the pants are still inside out. And then when you put the flare on it, you want to make sure that the right side is facing downwards. The seam allowance, how it folds, has to match each other. So when you lift this one up, it's facing upwards. You put the flare panel on it. This is the right side. The seam allowance is facing upwards. So I normally like to attach it starting from the bottom so that it can align the bottom side of the pants together. So we're just going to line up the creases with the guideline line you made. We're gonna pin it together like so. So now that we have one side of the flare pinned together to the pants, we're gonna start sewing. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna follow the original crease line of the seam of the jeans and use that as a guideline, line working our way from the bottom all the way to the top to the tip of the flare. Now we just have to pin the other side of the flare to the pants and then sew that in. So we're gonna take the new seam and we're gonna open it up so it's like this. And we're gonna iron this part down. And then when we turn the pants right side out, this is what we're left with. Now, of course, you don't want all of this bulk right here. So once everything is sewn in place, you just take your scissors and then just chop it off. This is what you are left with. 